This is AP Pre-Calculus Notes for Topic 1.2, Rates of Change. So just like we, we did before in Lesson 1.1, we're going to see the words of rates of change, and we're going to cross it off and change it to the word slope. And we, before, we've only been doing slope from two points, and that's throughout all of math, right? We usually say we have two points here and here. We say it's the, the rise divided by the run, and we can figure out what that slope is. So it's helpful to talk about the slope at a single point. Usually we talk about that in AP Calculus. We say that it's the, the derivative, but again, the derivative is a little bit too hard for us, so we're just going to call it the, the instantaneous rate of change at a single point, which feels weird to do because if you know anything about the slope, if you do the rise over the run, rise over the run, or my personal definition, which is the change in y over the change of x, if your run or your change of x is zero because it's a single point, then you're kind of dividing by zero, which feels weird, but we're just going to go ahead and hand wave this away and say, it, it'll work. It'll work out once we have more rigorous definitions of how to do a derivative. So we can look at a single point and see if that single point has a slope that is positive, negative, or zero. And that's what we're doing in today's lesson. So, and it is really helpful to think of it, having a little car where if I have an instantaneous rate of change just at one point, if I had to draw a line that is tangent, tangent meaning it only touches at one point, a secant would be like a line that touches at two points here and here, right? So if it's a tangent line, it touches at one point. If it's a tangent line, it touches at one point. You can kind of draw it anywhere that you want. You can say if there's a point right there, it's a nice horizontal line. If there's a point right here, you can see that the slope is going up. Think about a little guy riding a cart. Is the cart going up? If so, then the slope is positive. If the cart's not going up or down or you're about to go down or you're about to go up, um, your slope is zero. And then over here at time is equal to three, you can see that the slope is going down if I had to draw that tangent line. So those are all listed over here. Kind of a fun little fact, I guess, is that um, there's the world's fastest roller coaster um, in Abu Dhabi, and it goes 149.1 miles per hour, which is insane because the average speed of the Indy 500 was only 143.6 miles per hour. So it's faster than the average speed from the Indy 500 in 2008. And let's see how this looks on an example problem. So I want to know which of these slopes is the greatest and which of those slopes is the least. Um, and this is just for the instantaneous rates of change. So if you will, go ahead and try this with me. Draw a line that is tangent to this curve. I'm cheating a little bit. I'm using technology. I'm getting the right slope, and then I'm putting it through the point. Notice that I only touch at one point, and I touch nowhere else within this localized range. And then, again, I'm going to do the same thing for B. I can say, okay, the slope for B looks about, so that would be too much. I'm going to go right about there, and then I can move it into the right spot. And then finally, we have a slope down here, which is basically zero, and I can move that slope right there. Okay, so what do I notice about these slopes? Well, I'm noticing that this first slope is positive. I'm noticing that the second slope is negative. I'm noticing that this last slope at point C is zero. Um, I'll just leave zero. So which of these is the greatest slope? You can say that A is the greatest, so maybe I'll, I'll do my inequalities this way. Um, they, they chomp the one that's the biggest, right? So this is going to be A is the biggest, and which one is the smallest? Well, the most negative is the smallest, so therefore B has to be the smallest. And zero is in between a positive and a negative, so I can say C is in between um, A and B. All right, what about down here in example G? And this one, we're trying to find the uh, rate of change. Oh, you see the words rates of change? Cross it off for the word slope. Which of these has a slope that is the least? All right, so I'm going to make some tangent lines here. So I'm going to say tangent line here, tangent line here, tangent line here. And these are all instantaneous rates of change. I guess I should start using that terminology. Instantaneous rates of change, instantaneous rates of change. Okay, so I'm looking for the least. And another way of saying the least is the one that's closest to negative infinity. So I have a positive slope, an even more positive slope, a negative slope, and an even more negative slope. The one that's the least is the one that's closest to negative infinity. Therefore, the one that has the um, the steepest going down slope is the one that is the least, and therefore the correct answer here is D. All right, let's move on to um, average rates of change. So you'll be seeing A rock over and over again. Sometimes people say um, all those letters. Sometimes they say A. R and then OC. It just stands for average rates of change. And again, I'm basically doing the same thing that I did last time. I know that last time we said rates of change, we cross it off and say slope. You can cross off rates of change and say it's the average slope, but I, I'm even more lazy than that. I just say the whole thing is still slope. It's just a, a bigger slope. You can call it the big slope, right? Um, basically, it just means that you're connecting two points from a, a giant part of the function. So if I'm looking at example three, between two and three, what's happening? So at x is equal to two right here, right? I, I'm going to come up to the height of six. So I can make a point here, and then I have to come over here to three. So three is here, and then I come up here, and I come up to this point, 
and say, okay, well, that slope between two and three, that average rate of change is zero because this slope here of this line that I drew was zero. And what's happening between three and five? So we already have the point of three. We just did that last time, right? The new point five comes up here and that's, uh, it's down here a little bit. And I can see that that slope is going down. Uh, I, I mean, it's almost going down one, right one, down one, right one, but it's down a little bit more. So it's a little bit less than negative one. I'm gonna say that this is about negative 1.1 ish. Um, I'm estimating here. And then what about, we already did five, did five. What about seven? Where's seven? So seven is here, comes up to this point. And again, the slope is um, a little bit uh, similar to like one, right? Because you're going almost right one, up one, right one, up one, but you started down just this tiny little amount. So it's, a, it's about 1.1. Um, and what about between seven and eight? We've already done seven. So eight lives right there, maybe? I mean, it's kind of hard to see, but I think that's where it crosses. And that seems to be going um, down three, right one, which is a slope of exactly negative three. And we're looking for the one that is the, the greatest, the most positive. Well, the greatest one is going to be the most positive. 1.1 C is the correct answer here. All right. And then we're moving on to our last page for the notes. And I think we're done after that. Oh, I'm noticing that we're having some calculator questions. We'll talk about them in a sec. All right, let's read the question. Oh, yep. I'm still okay. Okay. So I'm looking for, um, we have a, a negative rate of change. We have a negative slope. Okay, so I, I know I have negative slopes here, which of the following definitions would be the best model for F. Okay, so these this is interesting, right? We want to have a, a slope, which again um, is, is a fraction, right? It's the change of Y divided by the change of X. So really what we're looking for is looking for one change and looking for another change. If both of these changes are the same, if they're both positive or if they're both negative, and I divide those, I'm gonna get a positive. But if one of them is a negative and one of them is a positive, like one of these two, then the slope will be negative. So what you're really doing is you're analyzing each of these and you're figuring out, is it positive or is it negative? So age and years, I mean, assuming we're no Benjamin Button, we are increasing in the age. And what about the height? The height of young child, again, we're assuming that nothing weird happens. You're not being ejected from a plane or something. There's no lost limbs. Um, we're assuming that the height will also be positive. So when I do my change of Y divided by my change of X, I'm doing a positive divided by a positive, And therefore this entire slope is a positive. And we were looking for one that is negative. So unfortunately, A is out of the running. What about B? Okay. Points scored in a basketball game. Points only go up and then the time remaining. Well, the time starts at like eight minutes and then it goes down per quarter, depending on what sort of game you're doing. So this one is gonna be negative. And notice that I'm doing a change of Y divided by the change of X. I'm doing a, a negative divided by positive, which indeed is a negative. This one is a negative, therefore it's the right answer. That's one that we're looking for. Let's go through C and D to make sure that we're <laughs> doing these correctly, right? Um, the time since a ball was thrown straight up into an air. So time goes forwards. We're, we're not going backwards in time. We're not um, time travelers, so. Time goes forwards, so that's a positive rate. And then the height and the feet of the ball. Well, this one is challenging, right? So like if you're throwing a ball up, then the height is gonna be going up, but eventually at some point it's gonna start coming back down. So the height goes up, but then it also comes down. So this is kind of a mixture of the two, right? This is both positive and it's negative. So we want it to always be negative. It said always, so maybe I should underline always negative up here. Um, this one is sometimes negative, but sometimes it's positive as well. So C is actually out of the running. And then what about D? Um, the radius of a circle and the area. Well, we have to make some assumptions. Let's go ahead and pretend that the area or the radius is increasing. If the radius is increasing, then the area should also be increasing. What about the other way? What if it, the radius is decreasing? Well, then the area would also be decreasing. In either scenario, you do a positive divided by a positive and it's positive or negative divided by negative is a positive. No matter what, this is going to be a positive rate of change. And notice that we have um, a mix here, a positive, a positive. The only one that was purely negative was indeed B. All right, let's go ahead and cross off D for sake. Okay, so um, whenever you have a calculator required, this is the first time in this course that we've had a problem that says we definitely really need a calculator. Um, you have some choices. So for the AP pre-calculus test, unlike the AP calculus test, is allowed to have a Desmos calculator. And you can have still like your fancy uh, graphing calculator, like your TI-83, your TI-84, your Inspire, all of those calculators also work. It's up to your teacher to decide what you want to use. Um, this year, I am going to try to have my students use a Desmos calculator. So let's go ahead and open up my Desmos graphing calculator. 
And let's go ahead and close out of everything. All right, so essentially what I want to do in my Desmos graphing calculator is I want to type in <laughs> this function, and I'm only paying attention between negative 10 and 10. And then once I have this function graphed, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the next part of the question. So I'm going to type in a k of x and make this equal to, and then just make sure you're typing in your decimals correctly. I'm going to go ahead and be quiet in case you're following the video as well. All right, so I have my function entered, and it looks like it's a, a parabola, which I guess I could have guessed because uh, whenever the highest degree is 2, you have a, that U-shaped parabola, a quadratic, right? All right, and because I know that this is a quadratic, um, I can say the following. Um, I actually want this calculator on the left-hand side because I'm right-handed. I don't want to accidentally hit it as I'm drawing. So because this is a quadratic, I know that it's either going to be this shape and it's going to be this shape, which is important because sometimes you have weird things where it does this or it does this, where maybe um, if we're zoomed in, maybe we're zoomed into this part of the graph, which is why it looks like a parabola. And if we, we zoom out, zoom out, zoom out, zoom out, okay, it's definitely only um, a parabola, which we, we knew because it was just a quadratic, right? Okay, so um, with a graph, a fancy like um, Inspire or TI-84 CE calculator, you would have to figure out um, where is the maximum? But with a Desmos calculator, you just touch the function and then touch one of these points and it says, hey, that maximum happens at an X coordinate of 2.471 and a Y coordinate of 8.348. That's really important. And if I come back over here and start looking at these numbers, I'm seeing, oh, I see an 8.348. I'm seeing a, a 2.470. Like these numbers seem familiar now. I don't know where those numbers are coming from. That doesn't make sense. So what are these saying? These are saying, oh, make sure we're, the, we're doing correct. Okay, so we have a positive, okay, every time you see the words rate of change, we're going to cross it off and just say slope. I don't know why I switched to blue. I'm switching back to red. Okay, so K has a, a, a positive slope between negative 10 and 8.34. Well, that seems to be right. I mean, look, um, negative 10 goes all the way to the left of the graph, and we know that um, that's just because that matches up with here. So I can kind of ignore those. 8.348, that, that seems to be the spot, right? You would be uh, tricked because this is actually a Y coordinate. Whenever you have a Y coordinate, we don't refer to it in terms of an X, right? X is usually how we define features. This is an accidental Y coordinate instead of an X coordinate. So this is not used to describe features. So common mistake. What about B? This is saying we have a positive rate between negative 0.663 and 5.605. Again, I have no idea where those numbers came from. Maybe if um, you entered something wrong, maybe if you didn't do that or something that you would have um, a weird interval, but those numbers don't even match up. Um, what about C? Okay, so I'm looking at um, C and D. They look like promising candidates, right? 2.470, 2.470, that is an X coordinate um, where we do change between having a positive slope and a negative slope. And we're asked to find a negative, and then we cross off rate of change to say slope, right? We're doing that in our mind's eye now. I don't want to have to write it over and over. So we're looking for a negative slope for both C and D. Where is that negative slope happening? Well, on the right side of the parabola. On the right side of the parabola, we're going down. So how do we say on the right side of the parabola? Um, between 2.470 all the way to the end boundary that matches the end boundary up here. So the correct answer here is D. If this had instead said a positive rate of change on this interval, that would have been correct because positive between negative 10 and that X coordinate that we found that was the maximum would have been great. All right, last problem for the notes. Example number six. We have all of these years and we're trying to find the average rate of change. Again, we're going to go ahead and cross you off. Average rate of change. We're trying to find the, the slope. Um when the life expectancy was the greatest. Okay, so I'm, I'm looking at each of these intervals. It seems to be adding 50, adding 50, adding 50, adding 50, and all of these add 50. Okay, so it's essentially asking, um, is it a bigger jump between here and here, here and here, here and here, or here and here? And because all of these birth years are incrementing by the same amount, we can kind of ignore them and just ask which one when subtracted is the largest? What is the biggest jump? And I'm going to very generalize this and say, okay, about 41 to about 46 um, is basically plus five. And again, I am estimating here, but you should estimate as well. It makes your um, math go faster, right? So I'm adding five and then about 46 to 50. I'm just going to call it 53. I know I could round this up to 54. If we're just going to say, okay, fine. If you want to do 54, I can do 54. Okay, so 46 to 54, you're basically adding four and then another four. So it's really adding eight here-ish, just rounding. Okay, so 54 to 71 is the same thing as saying... Um, 
16, right? Am I adding that right? Yeah, 16-ish. And then from um, 71 to 82 is about 11-ish. So adding 11-ish. And um, which of these is the greatest? Right there. And that happened between these two years, between 1900 and 1950. So between 1900 and 1950 is the correct answer. C. Um, always try to generalize things. Y yes, you could have used a calculator, but man, that would have taken forever. This one was kind of like a, a, a red herring. Like, yeah, you could use a calculator or you could just use logic and round the numbers. Um, that was very similar to our um, notes, the last question in topic 1.1 as well. All right, that does conclude our notes for topic 1.2, um, I believe. Yeah, then it goes on to the worksheet. So um, there's the fourth page, the third page, the second page, and the first page. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Thank you for watching. There we go.